Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt. I've spent the day here with the Mazda CX-50, which is the more stylized, ruggedized version of a car I'm intimately familiar with, the Mazda CX-5. There's a lot to love about this CX-50, so we're gonna hit the highlights, the best and the rest, starting with the rest. But before we do, I wanna thank Hall Mazda in Brookfield, Wisconsin, for making this video possible. Let's get to it. Number one, this CX-50 isn't riding on the rear-wheel drive chassis that's going to underpin the sister vehicle, the CX-70. In fact, this car rides on the same chassis that you get under the skin of the CX-30, so it actually shares more in common with the CX-30, in a sense, than it does with the CX-5. Number two is fuel economy. Now, in the turbocharged version of this, you get about 25 mpg in mixed driving according to the epa at least but me personally i spent a week in the car and i got closer to about 23 mpg plus the turbocharger adds, adds a bit of weight there's more turbo lag it does give you a lot of reward when you get into the throttle so it inspires you to drive it maybe a little less economically. Now the naturally aspirated motor is the one that I have in my car currently and I'm averaging about 28.1 mpg in mixed driving over about 40,000 miles which to me I think is, is pretty good. No, no turbo, no hybrid, still about close to 30 mpg. Number three, there's no hybrid and no plug-in hybrid option for your CX-50. Again, these powertrains will be coming in the new generation, the new chassis with the rear drive architecture that we'll see in things like the CX-90 and the incoming CX-70. But as it sits here, you can't get a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid for your CX-5 or your CX-50. Oh, and of course, the plug-in hybrids in that CX-90, they're quoting about 30 miles of fully electric range, so expect that to go up a bit for the CX-70. Pretty impressive. Number four is the driver assist suite. Now, you do have some pretty nice stuff. You've got radar crews and you've got a lane keeping assist, but it's not its not like a lane centering assist. So you're missing kind of that, that extra step, that next level that you would get in something like Hyundai's HDAS system or GM's Super Cruise system or Tesla's Autopilot, that thing that's really gonna allow you to take your hands off the wheel, relax, and maybe just shake the steering wheel every once in a while. Again, it's a decent system, but Mazda's a smaller brand and they haven't they haven't developed out an autonomous driving suite. And the last thing I want to talk about is the seat belt warning. Now check this out. I'm going to get in the car, close the door, foot on the brake, start. It's just going to keep doing this. I am in park, the parking brake is on, but just don't start the car unless you have your seatbelt plugged in because it's just going to ding at you. But now let's talk about some of the great things going on with this CX-50. Now, every CX-50 that comes off the lot gets all-wheel drive as standard. It's the kind of G-vectoring system, and you've got the new MyDrive system for an off-road orientation for your all-wheel drive. It'll use a center clutch pack differential to kind of send power around the car, and it uses brake actuation to send torque to whatever wheel has the most traction. If you're off-road and you're tripoding and one of your wheels is slipping, it'll use the brakes on that wheel to divert power over to the other wheel and get you through. Pretty impressive and nice to have all-wheel drive as standard. And I know we talked about the lack of hybrid options here, but the powertrains that you get here are very solid. You get one of two choices. The upgraded version is the 2.5 liter twin scroll turbocharged four-cylinder. It makes about 256 horsepower and a whopping class-leading 320 pound-feet of torque. Behind the wheel, it's like a tsunami of torque in that thing. Now, the base engine that you can get and the engine under the hood of mine and my wife's CX-5 is the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated, so non-turbo version of this, makes about 187 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. And that, mated with the six-speed automatic, is what made the Mazda one of Consumer Reports most reliable brands. Very good options and very reliable. And number three is the driving experience itself. Now, Mazda themselves said that despite this being the off-road one, the rugged one, the adventure one, they didn't want to abandon their signature driving style. And Mazda has always had a very, very nice road presence. The steering has a great feel and a great heft to it without being fatiguing. And again, despite the more rugged off-road nature to it, you do have a torsion uh, beam, or excuse me, yeah, a torsion beam rear suspension rather than a multi-link independent system. And again, that's going to keep costs down. It's going to be a little bit better off-road. And you are going to feel a little bit less sophistication over smaller bumps in this than something like a CX-5. But it by no means really 
negatively impacts the ride to, a, to an extreme degree. The cabin is still nice and quiet. You still have great vis visibility out the front, out the sides, and out the rear. And it still drives like a Mazda, it still drives really well. But now we'll talk about the looks of the car. Every Mazda that's on sale now looks fantastic, but I think this CX-50 is the best looking Mazda that they make. Again, it's very similar to the CX-5 in terms of size, but it's an entirely different front face. You've got a more squat and elongated front grille. You've got more kind of contouring on the hood. And then look at this, you've got almost like a shelf where you could rest, I don't know, an entire book here if you want. You've got revised headlights and LED runners. You've got some functional or maybe less functional arrow up here, amber LED runners for your fogs and blinkers, and then you've got kind of like a faux skid plate down here. Again, it's just a very, it's an aggressive look for the front end, and I think it looks very, very good. Now, I like this angle here because you can really see the bulging of the front fenders, and as we come around the side, you can see that those front fenders, they're wrapped in some scratchy black plastic, but it does look pretty good. These are the biggest wheels that you can get. They're kind of a diamond cut black and chrome finish. Um, interestingly, they're wrapped around an all, se an all season, not an all terrain tire. Again, this is the more off-road off oriented version, uh, but this is not exactly, Mazda didn't want to sacrifice their on-road feel and dynamics, but it is wrapped in some very thick black plastic all the way around the end. Now again, got black wing mirrors, which is great, black window treatments, we've got silver roof rails, and a panoramic roof, which you will not get on your CX-5. And then look at how flared these back hips are. Again, a much more aggressive, you do have a little bit of chrome on that back fang, but very aggressive rear flare. Again, the taillights very much match the headlights with a little bit squat, and kind of the top and the bottom cut off a little bit. Otherwise, it's very subtle, small Mazda logo on the center, some less functional, but stylistic, uh, aero and then dual exhaust out the back. Overall, super handsome SUV. And while we're on the back, I do want to talk about towing capacity. Now maxed out, your CX-50 can tow up to 3,500 pounds, which is a whopping amount, especially when you consider that the CRV is only 1,000 pounds and the RAV4 is 1,750 is where it tops out. So this is towing three times as much as a CRV and about twice as much as a RAV4. Very impressive. And now I just want to talk about the dash and the materials and the overall build in here. Again, this is going to be better than anything you're getting from Honda, from Toyota, from Subaru, from Nissan, any other competitors, this is going to be better. This is even better than the sister CX-5. I really like the cushiness. You can kind of see the give in the leather here. I love this cross stitching, It's kind of like a big X. Again, on the dash, I mean, look at that. You can see just the cushioning in here and this just makes it feel so much more elegant. You've got nice kind of tactile buttons and switches for your climate controls. You've got a nice kind of Lexus style recessed uh, infotainment screen. You know, really nice kind of plastic chrome here. There is more piano black in here than I think I might like, but when you look at the rest of the cabin here, it's hard to argue with it. But now I wanna focus on the technology itself. Now, all of your tech here is pretty good minus your driver assist switch, which we talked about. It's, it's objectively pretty good, but it's just lacking some of the robustness. But you have a huge, again, Lexus style infotainment system here. It's all controlled through here, except you do have wireless Apple CarPlay, depending on what trim you get, and that will be touchscreen. Again, it's kind of far if you want to reach and use the touch, but you can, but this works very, very well. You've also got a head-up display, which you don't get everywhere, and you have a mostly digital but not totally digital instrument cluster again we kind of dinged the honda crv for something like this not having the complete digital but this i think still looks a little bit more elegant and then this one's not going to have it but top trims will have a really really nice 360 camera so overall good tech suite here and then i want to talk about some of the luxuries and comforts you get here you get things like a heated steering wheel you can get things like cooled and heated front seats and you do get a big panoramic roof which you're not going to get on the cx5 and can even get rear heated seats. Pretty impressive, nice luxuries from a Mazda. And then I wanna talk about the rear seats themselves. First of all, look at the rich leather that you get in here. That contrast stitching continues from the front to the back. So it is just pretty nice, but stepping in here, it's fantastic. I mean, you get way more leg room in here than you would get in a CX-5. I do feel like I'm sitting up a little bit higher, but you get things like single map pocket, dual climate vents, you get dual USB-As here. 
again, you get better uh, leg room. You still have pretty decent head space. I do think the CX-5 might give you a little bit more, and you can get heated rear seats back here, depending on how you spec the car. And wrapping out, we'll talk about the trunk. Again, it's power lift gate, which you love to see. That's fantastic. And then you look in here, and especially since I just got out of my own personal CX-5, you have so much more space in here. Again, I use this as a barometer of how I measure my trunk space in my CX-5. So my, my trunk comes to about here. So you have another three, four, five inches, depending on how you want to put stuff in here. You have way more space in here. Plus you've got deep cubbies on the sides. Your seats will fold pretty flat, 60, 40. And you even have additional storage for your spare tire under here. How about that? Oh, and I know I talked about this on the RAV4 Hybrid, but you do have the power closed tailgate and a different button to lock it when you close it, which you didn't have on the RAV4 or the CRV, or I think the CX-5, we'll see. So that's it, that's the best and the rest of the new Mazda CX-50. And to me, at the end of the day, it's kind of about five to 10% better than the CX-5, pretty much everywhere, except maybe headroom and ride refinement. And at the end of the day, again, if it were me and my money, the only thing holding me back from getting a CX-50 is the fact that it doesn't come with a hybrid and it doesn't come with a plug-in. So for me, I'll be very eagerly awaiting the CX-70. But leave it down in the comments, what would you think between this, the CX-5, and the incoming CX-70? and we'll see you in the next one.